It's uh, uh, Michelle's birthday. Let's try that again. <laughs> Welcome to episode 44 of A Fern Between Us. I'm trying to relinquish control and see what happens. <laughs> we are two of the four owners of Bebop Winery. Uh, my name's Jesse. Her name's Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, it's my birthday, so pour me some damn wine. All right, what do we got here? We've got a um, a Cabernet Franc. I was, so as you guys know, Walla Walla. I was not drinking, um, or I haven't been drinking, except for with you guys, so hopefully you opened something yummy, and I have been craving Cabernet Franc, so <laughs> that's why this wine. And we are sold out of our Cabernet Franc right now. So, uh, we got a special bottle from a special place. We love Walla Walla. This isn't exactly a uh, winery we know of, but we know of Walla Walla and we know of Cabernet Franc, and we love both of those, so yes. there you go. Yeah, and um, Cabernet Franc is one of my favorite grapes. I love its unique mm. aromas. It really has a lot of earthy, mineral kind of content under some big, uh, but still tart, fruit aspects. Yeah. I, I just love it. I love the way it ages. Um, Walla Walla, we were actually talking before the show started. Uh, a lot of people just think of the Washington part of Walla Walla, but it does stretch into Oregon. And so this is actually from the Oregon side of uh, Walla Walla. But we spent uh, some time in Walla Walla when we were um, up in that neck of the woods. And one of the cool things that we realized is that it has the same microclimate. Well, Jesse actually knew this specifically before, and that's part of why we went to wineries there, but uh, as Dixon and our vineyards here, and that I think yeah. is a really fun aspect to talk about now that we have uh, somebody else's wine, yeah. to talk about what aspects from our Cabernet Franc li uh, living, <laughs> growing up here, um, what do you think makes it so unique? Is it just the altitude? Is it the mm. aspect, the slope, the soil, you know, all of those good things. While I drink, you tell me. <laughs> I would say the number one contributing factor is just going to be the temperature and weather pattern throughout the summer. So the degree days, if you're familiar with like um, UC Davis set up this thing called degree days. And it's basically all the degrees above 50 degrees throughout the growing season until harvest. And how and, and then they basically place you in, um, you know, uh, are you a one, two, three, four, or five growing region? And we're we're a cool, cool climate growing region. We're like a like a two or a three, and that's because we get so cool in the nights. And you're so cool. <laughs> and uh, and so our mean temperature during the throughout the growing season is way lower than you would think, even though it's, you know we do spend a lot of time at 85 or 90 degrees during the day. Even down south, where they're hitting 95 or 100 during the day, their nights are still pretty cool because it's a high altitude desert, and um, so it ends up being not that much warmer than, like, say, Napa, mm -hmm. and we're way cooler than Napa. We're more like... Um, and, and, all right, and then you think Washington, you think rainy. Washington, Oregon, you think rainy. A lot of people have that misconception, yeah. If you, go, if you go far enough on the other side of the mountains, uh, east of the mountains, they're a full-on desert, just like we are. So their humidity in Walla Walla is very similar to Dixon. You know, they're cl clocking uh, 10 20% throughout the growing season. Um, their rain comes as monsoons, like ours does. Um, their soils are pretty sandy. Their temperature mirrors ours, and they get super cold in the winter like we do. Um, so they have certain restrictions that, that we also have. Um, they, uh, they're, they're more advanced than we are. <laughs> I know that. As far as growing goes, you know, they bury a cane and things like that, which Yeah, that's pretty spectacular. Super labor you have, yeah, you got to have a lot of money behind you, too. Yeah. I have to come back to tasting this wine. Yes, please. Um, there is this awesome element of like hot rocks mm -hmm. um, and also white peppercorn. I'd go with the hot rocks and like a wet gravel kind of like combination. For sure, that <laughs> minerally like yeah. rainy wet um, mm -hmm. kind of thing. And what was um, the second thing you said? White peppercorn Ooh. on the finish. Spicy. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. And kind of a 
and super tart like cranberries. Like yeah, like but almost like um, dried mm-hmm. cherries. Okay, dried sour cherries. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Um, it reminds me of those ones that your mom used to get. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Back when we used Which to is a great addition to a salad, by the way. Oh, so good. <laughs> when we used to live with his parents and just pillage their pantry. <laughs> yeah, right. But in lots of ways, this does taste sort of similar to ours. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. The fruitiness, the fruit aspect of it is very similar. Body style is totally similar. Yeah. The acidity is right there with us. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I love it. I do too. It's cool. This is exactly what I was hoping it was going to be, and I'm so sad that you are sold out of yours. If anybody loved the Cabernet Franc leg I did, uh, we do still have some of the Abbott Red, which is Cabernet Franc and Syrah from the Abbott Vineyard, which is really, really lovely. It's a little softer, a little more approachable than the Cabernet Franc, Uh, so it's probably going to hit most palates um, even better. Yeah. But uh, it is getting low in stock, so definitely pick that up. <laughs> All right, so as we did say, it is my birthday, and so um, I did get this exquisite bracelet, oh, which yeah. uh, matches my earrings, and these are from Addie, <laughs> Addie, <laughs> Abby Madison. Um, Madison, God, what, am, what is wrong with me? I don't know. I, I had <laughs> two sips of wine, and now I can't speak. <laughs> Sorry, Abby. <laughs> Um, let's see, her, uh, Instagram is at, uh, Matheson Art Jewelry Studio. Uh, if you follow me, Wine First Song, uh, I did post today with a link to her, and it is just amazing. I love her stuff. It's, uh, contemporary while being, uh, very traditional, too. Yeah. And so I've got my major turquoise bling going. I'm so excited. And I've tried to turn this over to Jesse <laughs> and allowing him to take some of the questions that you guys sent in and pick his favorites and, and add help. some. I had some help as well from our daughter. And, Miss uh, Denali Day. So I think we're going to, uh, yeah, we'll just jump right into some questions. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and um, we are aware that a lot of people wanted to hear about... Oh, yeah. Let me do it. Okay. <laughs> Jeez. Come on now. <laughs> So, so many of you guys wrote in <laughs> with lots of great questions. Um, one, uh, there was a running theme that now we, there was so many questions in the one theme that we're going to make it its own uh, special at some point. Um, and that was having to do with wine competitions, which um, people want to know all kinds of stuff about it. So that will be a very soon upcoming show uh, sometime in the next month, I assume. <laughs> But uh, we'll take specific questions for that at that point. And, and we'll take all of those. And that some of the ones that you guys have already written in for. for. But, um, all right. All right. Question number one. I'm scared. <laughs> no. <laughs> wasn't me. What did, you, uh, what did you first think of the crazy idea to start a winery? Um, uh, I actually heard the idea because I knew Chris and Jesse um, and heard that that's what they were starting to do and I thought it was super cool. Um, I had never met anyone that had ever considered going into the booze business and I was like, why didn't I think of this? (laughs) And then um, when Jesse and I, it was, you know, a matter of weeks that kind of tumbled over each other and um, Jesse and I started formally dating, and um, he was like, what do you think of joining us in this crazy adventure? And I said, I like wine. <laughs> <laughs> right? And right. so, yeah, amazingly, I just thought it was genius. I thought it was a really cool idea, and I, it was so brand new to me, and I was like, yeah, wow, why aren't more people doing this? And then, you know, years down the road, I was like, I see why people aren't doing this. <laughs> <laughs> right? For one, it's really expensive and takes a long time, and you'll be broke forever. But, <laughs> but you're but wine rich. The, the perks are amazing. Yeah, you're wine rich. You're treated like you're um, uh, uh, a person of means or whatever. You know, you're, you're part yeah. of like some kind of like group where uh, you've got more prestige than than your income would uh, <laughs> dictate. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Okay, number two. What art medium are you into these days? Uh, or art medium do you wish
wish you were into these days, <laughs> as the case may be. Tell us about your art. <laughs> your or art lack. Your, your artistic uh, life or whatever. Or lack thereof. <laughs> um, I did go to art school, uh, the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, I think all of my teachers would be pretty disappointed in my art avenues. <laughs> um, we, uh, when we first had Denali, we were living in a much bigger place and I was still painting. At that point I was doing uh, palette knife oils and on pretty big canvases. Um, that was fun. Yeah, I loved it. It was really great. And then we built our home uh, that we film in here. And uh, it's tiny, and I really don't have the space, and I really got caught up in my role with the winery. And so that really has become my, my artistic venue, I guess. <laughs> um, there for a while, I would draw things that Denali asked me to draw, that was my... <laughs> <laughs> nice. But um, I am, you know, I tossed around the idea actually with Denali that we start having like a weekly art class and get back into it, but mm -hmm. at this point... Would um, it be oils again, or what, what do you think? Um, I'm kind of thinking drawing, you know, drawing is such a, uh, a muscle you have to keep working, and uh, so I kind of feel like I need to grassroots it and get my skill Skills back up. up. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard when you see it in your mind and then try to get your hand to do it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, question number three. What is your strangest memory of childhood? <laughs> hmm. Strangest memory of childhood. Oh, I'm going through some that are popping into my head. I'm like, I don't know that I should share that. Um, <laughs> Supposed to be off the cuff here. Bro. Oh shh. <laughs> um, uh, oddly, the first ones that jump to mind. Sorry if I'm sharing too much to anybody that is about to be thrown under the bus. Um, but uh, they had to do with trees. I don't know why. Um, the first one is. Please tell me it's Gabrielle. Well, that's the second one. Okay. Uh, the first one is um, I was swinging from a tree and fell out and fell on my tailbone. Really, really hurt. Um, and my sister was babysitting, and um, I think she had smoked pot. Now, looking back, I think that's why the reaction was as bizarre as it was. She was in mad hysterics as I cried and was writhing around on the ground. Um, but she thought it was really, really funny. And so <laughs> now I'm like, oh, I think those funny cigarettes were um, maybe something else. Mm -hmm. Um, and the second one is one of my favorite stories and one of uh, my best friend for life. Uh, we were best friends since we were babies. Uh, Gabrielle, hi. Um, <laughs> she got stuck in our apple tree. Uh, we were playing like supermodel. <laughs> she was wearing a really tiny tight uh, jean skirt and she climbed up onto this branch in this apple tree and I was supposed to be like taking pictures of her. And then she went to jump down, and it, sh the back of her skirt caught a knot in the tree. And so she just swung, and then she was panicked, and so she put her arms out, you know, and she looked like Superman flying. And I then got to have a turn where I was just laughing hysterically. And I couldn't get her down by myself, so I had to go get my mom, who then came out, and we both stood there and laughed hysterically <laughs> while she just languished in the tree. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. Uh, Very mean people. I know. Okay. So. <laughs> uh, question number four. How do you do it all? Mother, wife, winery, judging? Um, <laughs> you looked at me like that wasn't wine judging, but no. like judging. Wine judging. <laughs> And wine judging, that's what how, I'm how do you stay so judgy? Um, <laughs> With all the judgy, judgment around here, I would wonder, how do you find any free time? <laughs> I tell you. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know that I have previously done it very well. Um, I feel guilty when I'm away. I wish that I was doing... Uh, 
uh, competitions when I'm at home. I feel like if I'm working, I'm not giving enough to my family. It's, I think it's hard and no matter which um, part I'm focusing on, I feel the tug of the other side. So that's good. I think it's really, really hard. <laughs> And, um, and you know, my body seems to be telling me to back up and that I can't do it all. So, you know, it has caused uh, some changes and I am actually, you know, it was really nice to go on vacation and not be pulled toward as much work as yeah. I'm used to. So, uh, the answer is I'm not. <laughs> All right. Uh, da, 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 da. Number five. What's your favorite birthday present you've ever received? Oh wow. Speaking of birthdays. Yeah. Oh. Um. Well, I can't quite remember. <laughs> nice. But I mean, currently I'm like rocking this amazing bracelet, which I'm <laughs> like, this is my favorite thing ever. Um. Isn't that terrible? I can't think of any other birthday but right now. <laughs> nice. I don't even remember my birthday last year. Mm. So clearly oh. your husband isn't getting new <laughs> good birthday presents. You know what was my favorite birthday? It was my 40th. And you threw me that incredible 40th birthday dinner uh, extravaganza. And it was... You were know, like just, 20 of your favorite people from around all different... Well, that sounds terrible. <laughs> I love everybody, and Great. all of my friends are very special. Um, but it but was we're able to get 20 super people tight. tight, you know, scrambling. Family in and friends, exactly. Family and a few friends, like one from high school, one from college, one from each yeah. of the areas of oh, life. Oh, it was or so hard, but it was, was fun. It was amazing, and that yeah. was an incredible gift. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, I did come through once. Um, what do we got? All right, so what accomplishments are you most proud of in your life? Mm. Um, accomplishments. Um, I am thrilled about my wine judging. Mm -hmm. um, that has been really, really fun and surprising, and um, I, I love the weird... Uh, elements that have come along with that, you know, surprising myself, even being able to um, tell Lubos, the parents of that one grape, that he made me taste a wine, and oh, it's like, yeah. you do not know this grape, but tell me the parents that created it, and I was, <laughs> and I was able to nail it, which was totally crazy and wild and scary, um, so those kind of accomplishments are really, really fun. Um, yeah. I feel uh, accomplished that we are still together mm -hmm. and have a good relationship and yeah. um, that our daughter uh, is working with us and doesn't totally hate us. I think that's an accomplishment. <laughs> yeah, that is. That is. Um, and I'm really, really proud of the winery. And mm -hmm. that's an accomplishment that all four of us have worked really hard toward, but I'm really proud of us. And uh, I'm proud of the work that I've done too. So. Absolutely. All right. Cool. I like that. Uh, with a gift for smelling, this kind of goes into uh, judging a little bit, but not really. Mm -hmm. So this is a little different. So we left this one in. Uh, with a gift for smelling, what are some of your favorite smells? Mm, in wine or just in general? I, I, I would say in general, actually. Well, one of my I mean, favorite let's smells do both. Let's is do both. a great wine. Yeah. There's nothing I like better than smelling really good wine. Um, uh, uh, I love the smell of rain. Um, that's always, especially in New Mexico rain that kind of has that arid, uh, hot, dirt kind of component, which I also like that smell in wine. Um, I, I like a lot of weird smells that are out in nature, like leather saddles. Um, I, I like that in my wine too. Right. Um, uh, I like the way you smell. Oh, come on. <laughs> um, what else do I? Uh, I love 
love smells. Oh, I love the smell of when you're cutting a, a jalapeno or spicy, but raw. I yeah. love that smell. I love the smell of bacon cooking. Well, wow, who doesn't like that? <laughs> Even yeah. our vegetarian daughter doesn't mind uh, the smell of bacon. She's like, ooh, that smells good. I love the smell of roses that are in nature really pungent smelling. You know, like when we were uh, living in Pardeen in Colombia, the center plaza had these gorgeous, gorgeous roses and they smelled just so incredible. Right? I mean, they had like 50 different kinds of roses and it was just, they it was were massive amazing. and they were really blooming while we were there. Yes. Uh, Alrighty. Um, what? Uh, what is your emotional sanitizer during quarantine? How do you maintain mental health? <laughs> <laughs> or do you? I Maybe. don't. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, last year, around this time, we were thinking that this wasn't really going to affect us. And we ended up in New York. We were. I was gearing up for this huge year. That was um, the end of February year. that we were there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I was gearing up for this huge year of a lot of travel, a lot of events, a lot of judging, <laughs> and then it just fell away at the beginning of March, and I felt the panic when my calendar got wiped completely clear. And I think I was the first um, to say to Jesse, you know, like, oh crap, like, what are we going to do? And he's like, ah, oh, we'll figure it out. And I was like, no, like this is big, people have canceled things in October. And so I felt, I feel like I've been a little mental, um, <laughs> trying to come up with ways to engage with all of you guys, um, stay relevant, uh, stay out of the fridge, um, stay, you know, That's hard. oh. <laughs> um, I have more pants, loungy pants, than any one person should own, but, um, <laughs> I think that's a nationwide trend, though. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, I love movies. I've always loved movies. And so we now subscribe to HBO. We have Netflix. And we have Amazon Prime. And we have Hulu. Hulu. We have everything. because We've seen it all, though. <laughs> We're bored with everything, though. <laughs> like like all of you, I'm sure. Right. You're, you're watching this, so obviously you can put the bottom of the barrel more or less. <laughs> but that is, that is what helps me, is uh, just... You know, making sure to take breaks, and uh, I work as much as I can, and then I watch movies and try to just be kind to myself. Where are we at time-wise? Uh, seven minutes left. Okay. As parents, we often uh, feel like we are failing. Is there something you feel like you've done right that you can offer as advice? Mm. Um, I don't know that my <laughs> daughter's going to agree with me, but, um... <laughs> Was the whipping the right thing? <laughs> <laughs> the locking her in her room? Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you know, I guess, um, you know, one of my dearest friends had said early on, you parent the child that you have, and I think that that is one of my favorite pieces of advice, and yeah. early on, um... Well, when we put Denali in uh, preschool, I thought, oh, now that she's going to start school, I'm going to have all this time on my hands. So I uh, went through the intensive CASA training to be a CASA worker. Which is... Uh, advocating for children that are going through displacement. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and it's a really amazing program and an incredible thing to participate in and be a part of. Um, I just didn't know that that was actually going to be what I applied to my own life. Um, so I never actually moved into getting a case, but uh, my daughter became my case. And the biggest thing that I learned from that was not to be afraid to advocate for your child. And uh, it's hard because as parents, we want to not really rock the boat. We want teachers to like us. We want Default authority. To to social norms. Yeah, is, we uh, want authority, you know, figures like the principal or the superintendent to, you know, say, oh, she's so nice. And yeah. unfortunately, in order to get things done and have, you know, things that need to happen for your child happen. You can't always be nice. Yeah, you need to be assertive. And as we know, assertive also starts with a B word for a lot of women. <laughs> and you have to get real comfortable with that. 
and that was that was uh, a difficult but really really important thing to learn how to do and it's helped me too once you start advocating for somebody else you learn how to advocate for yourself yep. so I guess you know don't be afraid <laughs> nice. I like that. <clears throat> um, besides Vivac, mm -hmm. what is your favorite varietal, winery, and wine region? Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, well, I love Cabernet Francs. Um, I love, uh, we talked about San Giovese on uh, one of the episodes recently. Mm -hmm. Just how varied it is because uh, Brunello is one of my favorites, but so is Chianti. You know, reservas and um, that it just has such a breadth of versatility. Um, I don't love so many; uh, it's hard to pick. Um, uh, my favorite wine region that I want to live in is Tuscany. It's definitely my my other home. What about for wine wise? Uh, well, I love the wines of that region. Um, is that your favorite wine region for wine? Oh, you mean um, <laughs> Central Otago? Just trying to get slippery. Right. Central Otago makes some of my favorite Pinots on the planet, and uh, of and course, Sauvignon Blanc. yeah, and exactly, I love a good Sauvignon Blanc. Um, I love Pinots from Canada, and Pinot uh, Blanc. Uh, Ooh. Uh -huh. um, and then there's Champagne. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know that I can answer that question. I love them all like children. <laughs> What's your favorite winery besides Vivac? Oh, um. Well, you know, we're very similar. I love Domain Carneros. I think they just do brilliant things. Um, Langman. <laughs> so uh, we keep talking about him. He likes to watch the show too, so hi. Um, <laughs> absolutely spectacular wines. Um, uh, gosh. Um, I love so many. You know, that Walla Walla Vintners. Do you remember the guys that greeted us in overalls and they were kind of pissy? Mm -hmm. And then they poured their wine on uh, a couple of saw horses and a two by four. <laughs> and they were really not into, you know, customer service, but their wine was fantastic. I don't um, know how it is these days. We haven't seen it or... Right? Who knows? Tasted it in 20 years probably, but... Um, gosh, uh, there's so many wineries that are just so amazing and more and more popping up too. Oh yeah. No, I mean, you just cannot insane, stay I mean. on top of all of the different wineries. And, um, I think when we started, there was like 6,000 wineries in the U.S., and now there's like almost nine. So that's a lot yeah. in the last 20 years. That certainly is. <laughs> uh, that's all the questions I've got on here. All right. Because uh, we are going to take a bunch of those questions for the judging. Mm -hmm. Which will be a Michelle interview show as well, sort of. <laughs> it, it'll be. Um, I, I do appreciate that everybody really wants to hear about how they work and how I got into it and yeah. and what it would kind of look like. So we're gonna do um, a in depth. I like. Yeah. I like this idea. I think it'll be really yeah. fun. And next week what? we're going to do Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Yeah, we're doing a special throughout the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, oh, cool. where you do a wine flight with uh, perfectly paired Echoa chocolates. And so it's four wines, four truffles for $18. And I highly recommend that you make a reservation because we're already getting people that are interested in coming and sitting on our patio. And there's not as much space as sometimes. Yes, yeah, socially <laughs> distanced, you know. Hopefully the, whole the weather holds out. Well, we got three days. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that'll be good. Um, anything else? I think that's it, <laughs> you guys. Cheers. Thank you we're gonna, so much. We're going to pair a Cabernet Franc with some duck, some roast yes. duck. I've made some stuffing. Mm -hmm. We've got an apple pie for afterward. Apple crumble pie. Apple crumble? What do you call it? <laughs> yeah. Apple crumble. Uh, 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 uh. So, cheers, you guys. <laughs> Thanks Thank for tuning you. in.